DISH has been a great partner of Comscores for over 10 years. And the exciting thing is that DISH was actually our first national footprint as we began to aggregate data from MVPDs in order to build our census-like currency in the marketplace. And because of DISH and being the first uh, to come on board as a national uh, footprint, that was really helpful in getting us started. So they have been a partner all along and been a really great partner and really allowed us to get our business started. The second first that we did with DISH, which is equally as exciting, is they were the first company who did addressable television measurement and depended on Comscore as an independent third party for that measurement with advertisers and agencies. And they were really way up front, um, out front in launching addressable TV to the marketplace. So we were happy to be part of that and excited to be part of it. And then this week's announcement is taking that a step further to cross platform. So we do collect information from Sling via the VCE tags that we have, our validated campaign essentials. And we have, of course, as we discussed, the second-by-second -second information from the DISH linear addressable footprint. And now we're able to put those two together so that advertisers and agencies can buy Sling and DISH in one campaign and really look at the reach and frequency from Linear Addressable plus the addition of the Sling Addressable platform. So in terms of the OTT part or the Sling part or the, um, and the expectations of, of Sling, but of course there's many others and there's a big demand for OTT delivered cord cutting, advertiser supported OTT uh, programming. What does this mean in terms of the maturity of the industry, its readiness for advertising. Uh, maybe you could put it into some context for us. Great. We think that this campaign, or this announcement about this campaign capability has generated a tremendous amount of interest because we have been hearing from our network partner and from our OTT partners about how do we put this all in one place. And with Dish and Sling, because it's one location that's able to execute both the sale of the campaign and then using us the measurement of that same information back, they <clears throat> are out in front of the industry. And what that does is I think it opens people's eyes and we've certainly had a lot of inquiries following the announcement about, hmm, how can we do this with our OTT or how can we get involved in addressable? Um, maybe we're not there quite yet. <clears throat> and addressable television we think is big. It's uh, about $1.3 billion today and we believe really strongly today, most of our clients start with linear and then go to addressable. We see a future where that flips, where clients start with their addressable targets and then they expand those addressable targets to linear TV. And we think very highly that uh, addressable is gonna be a really important part of the digital landscape and, and the TV landscape of the future. And Kathy, just to be clear, how do you define addressable? <laughs> is that basically the satellite and the cable operators with their two minutes? Is it more than that? Or what is, what is addressable and what could it be over the next couple of years? Today, addressable is uh, whatever inventory that the operator has negotiated with each of their network partners that they can sell. A lot of times that matches up with the two minutes on linear. Sometimes it's a percentage of the total and so it varies. The cool thing about addressability though is it's dynamic ad insertion and so it doesn't really matter um, how much it is or where it's located. You're not inside a pod. You have the opportunity to be able to insert throughout the content and you are able to target subscribers in a much more finely blunt uh, instrument, I would say, in terms of finding the specific targets that you're looking for through addressable television. And finally, um, the analytics are getting there, the publishers have the platform. What about the view of the advertisers? Um, not all of them are sold on addressability, uh, or some of them see it as a mix. Uh, how do you see the um, perception of the buy side changing with all this new technology? I think that the buy side just hasn't seen it as being big enough. And 
This is a great example of how that's beginning to change. Because when you can take digital inventory and linear television inventory, and you can pull it together cross-platform, it becomes bigger. And it begins to really get the attention and the interest of the agencies and the advertisers. This is step number one, really, uh, to starting that happening. And I think that it's going to be a really exciting 2018 is going to be the year of addressable.